In today's video, we're going to be learning about Uzbek food from Central Asia. And we'll also be talking to some of the Uzbek people who have settled down here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Coming up next guys, stay tuned. Central Asia, as it is defined today, refers to the five former Soviet republics Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. The five countries have a shared history of being part of Tsarist Russia in the second half of the 19th century, which ultimately became part of the Soviet Union in the 1920s. The Central Asia region has historically been closely tied to its nomadic people and the Silk Road. So I thought it'd be interesting to learn a bit more about the people and cuisine and I was lucky enough to be able to reach out to some of the people from Central Asia who happened to be residing here in Kuala Lumpur to introduce me to their cuisine. So here we are at a restaurant in the heart of Kuala Lumpur which specializes in Central Asian food. And the name of the restaurant is, you guessed it guys, Central Asia. And here are my friends. Diana and Olga from Uzbekistan. Hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Welcome to Central Asia. Let's go inside, ladies. So tell me a bit about yourself, Olga. Hi, my name is Olga Kim. I was born in Uzbekistan, then I moved to Russia, then now I'm living in Malaysia. Uh, my race is Korean. Yeah, it's like Russian-Korean. And how long have you been in Malaysia for? I'm living in Malaysia for 10 years. I came here in 2010. Did you know much about Malaysia before you got here? I know about Malaysia uh, in 2007. Then I started to search it, uh, what is Malaysia. And I asked my friend uh, to come, you know, to travel to Malaysia. So we came first in 2008, it was June. Um, so we arrived to Penang and I love Penang, so I think my favorite place is Penang. <laughs> Diana, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Hi, my name is Diana. I live in Malaysia for 15 years. I came here in 2005. And did you know much about Malaysia before you got here? Yes, of course I heard. Uh, it's been introduced through the agency and uh, four of us, we came here. It's uh, two boys and two girls. We came to study to the Erican Language Center. And yeah, that's how we've been introduced to Malaysia. And could you eat the local Malaysian food when you first got here? Oh no, we couldn't eat the food. Especially me, I couldn't eat the food. So for me, it was difficult at the beginning. And of course, I was looking for uh, Western food or cook something at home, but definitely not local food. I was not used to, to spicy food. What about you, Olga? Could you eat the local Malaysian food when you first got here? I love it from the first step. <laughs> yeah, my favorite food was uh, on the beginning is uh, Kyu Tiao. So can you speak Malay now? I uh, can't speak. I I think think you... say, 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 check up. Sikit, sikit. Yeah. She can speak uh, a bit, but not me. I can't. Yeah. In Malaysia, everyone can speak English, so it's, it's not hard to communicate with people. So what's your favorite Malaysian food now? Oh, I have a lot. I have a list. I of like favorites. tandoori chicken. It's not a Malaysian food, I guess. No, why? It is Ma it is Malaysian, mm -hmm. right? I like spicy food. You like now? Yeah. <laughs> what about durian? Oh, the yes, durian. Durian love. is another story. Durian, I love durian. Yeah. I can eat a lot. Yeah. It's like, and I actually spend a lot of money on it as well. One time, me and my friend, she invited me to her place, and we ate, only two of us, we ate seven durians. This here is Shukran. He handles most of the restaurant's daily operations and has picked up the local Malay language during his 11 years here in Malaysia. Shukar prepares the food in the restaurant every morning for his customers. It's actually a lot of work as the restaurant is run only by a few people. And it involves preparing the bread, the pastries, cooking the noodles and also preparing the barbecue meats. Saya nama Shukrat. 
Saya seni saya dari Uzbekistan. Saya seni sudah sebelas tahun Malaysia. Shukran, what attracted you to Malaysia? Kel seni dari Muslim, negara Muslim. Pas tu seni lagi orang dia baik. Memang orang Malaysia banyak baik. Lagi seni jalan-jalan senang ada negara cantik-cantik tempat banyak. Was communicating a problem for you when you first got to Malaysia? Yeah, bila saya datang sini, ya saya tak tahu English, tak tahu Malaysia bahasa saya tak tahu. Saya cakap Uzbekistan and Rus Russian. Oh. Ini saja. Lepas tu saya jumpa kawan-kawan orang Malaysia, orang Indonesia, orang lain-lain negara. Lepas tu saya cerita sama dia bahasa Malaysia. Saya belajar bahasa Malaysia. Sekarang boleh check up saya bahasa Malaysia sikit-sikit. Sekarang banyak pasir ni. <laughs> Shukra tells me that because there weren't any restaurants offering Uzbek food then, so he decided to introduce the food here to Malaysians instead. Lepas tu saya fikir mau buat dan lepas tu ya, business restaurant. So today Shukra is introducing to me some of the local favourites from his country. So is this a kind of soup? Borsh. Okay, borsh. It's Russian, uh, real Russian soup, uh, which is cooked with uh, vegetables, meat, uh, beetroot. beetroot. Yeah, the most uh, important uh, ingredient is beetroot. Beetroot, and, right? And cabbage. Yeah. yeah. And this one here is known as lagman, which is a dough made from eggs, water, and flour, and then cut into noodles. It's then boiled and stewed with a hearty sauce made with mutton, potatoes, carrots, peppers, onions, and tomatoes. And what's this one? This one is a shashlik. It is um, what is called a Russian satay. <laughs> so it's really... Shashlik is basically a marinated meat and is skewered and cooked on a grill. And it's usually served with pickled onions. Onions they mix with um, vinegar, vinegar, okay, and some uh, pepper. This is bread, right? It's bread. It's a national. It's and then you have the bread here, which the locals call non. The way how they cook it, tandoori. Olga and Diana also share with me the tea culture and tradition in Uzbekistan. And like in most cultures, serving tea is an art and there is quite a lot of interesting things you need to look out for. Yes, so what we do? This is tea, also known as chai. Diana and Olga are explaining to me that it is usually served in small bowls and that they usually serve only half filled. They tell me that it is generally considered impolite to serve a full bowl of tea to someone as it is indicating to them to quickly finish up their drinks and then piss off. Why I say that we are putting uh, not the full cup? If we put a full cup, like in Russia is different, yeah? Uh, because I live in Russia about 10 years, and uh, in Russia you have to serve a full cup of tea, then you will show that you respect uh, the person, you know? Uh, but uh, Uzbekistan, if you put more than this, if you put full, it's meaning you, are, you do not respect that person. It's meaning you are just like, can you drink quickly and go? I have something to do. Well, or might be I don't like you, or something. Or might, or might be burn yourself because it's not gonna cool off uh, immediately, very fast, right? Yeah. So by serving a uh, half of a uh, piala, uh, it's also will cool off the tea faster. So the person will not burn himself and can eat in few sips. Let's try. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about the designs on the tea set? Yeah. So. As you see here, is a, is a, it is flower of cotton. Uzbekistan is the uh, richest country of the cotton. So that's why it has um, become a symbol of uh, Uzbekistan. So ladies, how do Uzbeks typically greet one another? No. Actually, we non-stop can non -stop. say, like, okay, like yeah. for example, How are you? Tla, uh, oh, we speak Russian, okay? Can you speak Russian? Привет, как как мама? Все нормально? Все хорошо? Как дети? Как сестра? Да? Как дети? Как мальчик твой? Ты поела уже? Поела. А ты поела? Чай, пойдем пить. Да, so it will be something like that. So it's about this time that I decided to just leave the bloody camera on the tripod and join the party and start eating. You know what? Let's eat, guys. 
Yeah. All right, so what, what can I try today? Everything. <laughs> I'm in between two girls and I ask them, what can I try? And they say everything, so... Don't pause that. Yeah, yeah, I'll cut that. <laughs> so, can you tell me a bit about this one? <clears throat> and this is plov, which is rice with chunks of meat, with carrots, peppers, and caraway seeds. And it's cooked in mutton fat to give it that full flavor. Plov is considered a national dish, and it's a favorite amongst the locals. So I think it's safe to say that, uh, you know, anywhere you are in Asia, you obviously eat a lot of rice also. I mean, rice is definitely in the menu. Is it? What about that one? What's that one? Uh, this is uh, called manti. It is a uh, kind of dumplings, uh, which is steamed. Uh, and inside is uh, meat again. And I can tell you that Central Asia will love to eat a lot of meat. And this one here is called manti. They are round dumplings served with minced mutton, mutton fat and onions. It's steamed and then served with yogurt. Um, adding sour cream. Mm -hmm. Yep. And inside it's uh, it's beef. It's beef. Minced beef. Okay. Uh, maybe minced, but usually uh, we, we we prefer to cut it. So this one is with. I'm not gonna ask. I'm just gonna try straight away. All right. It's not heavy. It's actually very refreshing. It's got eggs. It's got potatoes, peas, um, diced potatoes, diced carrots. So this one is the board. What's that on top? Uh, on top is uh, also uh, sour cream, mm -hmm. or it might be uh, just yogurt. Oh my goodness. Diana, can you tell us about this bread? Okay, that's called Lipeshka. It's a very famous bread in Uzbekistan. That's a main actually bread in Uzbekistan. Some of it actually can last uh, it's exactly from this uh, city. It's uh, called Samar the picture? Yeah, Samarkand. This city is the part of the Silk Road. It will not spoil. It just dried. Dry. It just dried, but it will not. Uh, it will be without the mold or yeah, yeah. anything. Yeah. It just will be dry bread. That's it. And it can last. And actually, after that, when you put into a water, you yeah, can yeah, drink yeah. it tea with it. <laughs> <laughs> or you can steam it. Oh yeah. yeah. And it still will be fine, even after one or two years. So yeah, so everything, everything in Uzbekistan is come with this bread, with Lipyoshka. It's uh, uh, like Russian say, Hleb Simul Galava. Trying out the Lakman was an interesting experience. It's basically a dough made from eggs and served in a sauce made with mutton and potatoes, carrots, peppers, onions and tomatoes. The first taste is quite gamey. But in many ways, I feel it's a dish that is Chinese influence, but with its own distinctive style, of course. But more importantly, I'm really enjoying the experience of trying out the food here of Central Asia. Shukra, Diana, and Olga has been so welcoming and making the time for me to have this experience with them. And that's my experience and crash course in learning about Central Asia, especially Uzbekistan and its interesting cuisine. I honestly can't wait to visit that part of the world one day and experience it firsthand myself. As for now, I can only imagine what it must have been like living during the times of the Silk Road and all its exotic and mysterious splendor. I can only share the experience now with you guys through my camera lens. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing, give us a thumbs up and also to hit that bell and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!